All right, well, uh, I asked Sean yesterday at the end of the day, you know, do I have a few hours tomorrow morning to get the braces in for that vestibule? He said, oh yeah. So then <laughs> I called him just to check in an hour ago at like nine. And he's like, oh, we're going up in an hour. So they're currently pre-made to the specs that I showed you yesterday that I did on site based on measurements. And they're on the top of the car. I don't know if you can see them up there. Because again, work car. Anyway, I am I assume he's not gonna have it in the air when I get there. Um, that would be a dick move. So I told him I'm on the way and that I'm gonna walk up and install them and then we can go up. I'm sorry that I missed everything between then and now. Uh, it's probably not a lot. It should be self-explanatory when we see what he's done. And I will continue to explain it to the best of my ability, but uh, let's see what we got. Well, we got some rain. We're going up. Look at that. If you watch any of my other lifting videos, you watch me spend all day looking for a couple inches. There she goes. You ever spend all day looking for just a couple more inches? I took that block. <laughs> took a couple blocks. That mortar's good. That was good mortar. Look at that. Yeah. The power of hydraulic fluid, baby. Braces went right in there. There's your, there's your power pack hanging on a couple cribbing blocks to get the stroke because you need to have the overall you know lift height that you want in the thing so you gotta hang down into the ground some with that. Sounds like we're gonna pause and have a little inspection. Look at this. Isn't that I, I did this for Ed years ago. Tap conned this threshold in. That's just wood trash. I'll throw it on the discard pile. Now we gotta get the last little bit of this type of stuff that we don't want to truck out to somebody as dirt or block. So you got the steel matrix and then I guess you just block up to touch whatever you're trying to Get a hold of. Already feels awesome in here with that, you know, basically eight foot height, probably. Well, get back to you and let you know how much. Oh, so much better. <laughs> this shit can all come out of here now. So, I don't want to slow anybody down and get commenced to doing that, probably. I'll get these old columns out of here also. Drag that shit out. Put our electrical panel rode up on the sill. We just double check right before, make sure that's just stuck to that. So it just came right up, which is nice. Way, way it should be installed. Just adding some thickness to the cribbing. Here we are looking out at the garage. Everything looks better with a higher ceiling in that garage. Even that garage. See if we can't do something about that. Get the floor down further than it ever was and maybe even leave the top of the door opening and just stretch it down and then see if I can't find him a longer overhead door or add a 
piece to it. It never hurts to have more headroom. Here's our setup at the church, uh, church chimney. Went right on up there. Here and there, got some shims, old school. Got some big, some regular. Here's a look at that monster clamp. It just feels great in here with this true eight foot ceiling right now. All right, I'm just breaking down more shit that can't stay. So I'm just noticing he ended up in the wall bay and he applied just basically a ledger and I've done that before just to lift on and then added a stick of I-beam, slid it over, clamped it to get in there, blocks and clamps there. Sounds like we're going up a little more. Try and see that inside. It's healthy to never be able to tear yourself away from the imaginary hypothetical visualization of things going bad there being an issue getting caught on something I'm sure he's had a couple small things but in the future when you set up you're thinking about you know whenever want those to happen again so when you've done hundreds or thousands you've got so many little layers of well we don't do that anymore we don't do this anymore we don't do that anymore and then you you know, you're standing, you're standing in the product of all that education. So it looks like we're way off. Weight off. And then, uh, we'll make some changes or something and get things just so. Here's our socket in the ground from where that tree trunk was used as a post. And the gravel is digging around here. It's been all gravel. We were unsure what to, we would find, whether it would be shale. But this is just beautiful <laughs> gravel soil. Ed's got like raised beds and stuff in the back. He probably could just scrap that whole idea and work the ground up itself, clear the trees out to make plenty of sun. Amend it a little bit, but he's got great ground for growing here already. So... Here's that little added room. Sean pointed this out to me. I thought I had established that the joists went in the same direction in that little added in that little addition that will happen there let me go over here and look can i get in there and then look here yeah i'm gonna go around this way <clears throat> i'm gonna watch these hoses they're obviously robust because they have a lot of pressure on but we don't want to crush or slice them if we can help it but if you look over here these joists go to there, and then over here there's three or four that go in this direction. Or, yeah. So, I don't know. Essentially, we have got to add a couple layers to this joist to make it into a beam to get from our outside wall over to somewhere here. Probably the end of the new, or the end of the new main beam, and this laminated up beam here under that is where that heavy post goes on that big heavy pier and then as far as what we're doing over there hopefully it will be okay to sit down on the new foundation in the interim and then be amended further to be correct rather than having to do something before you put any weight on it sometimes those things have to be done because you really i mean this area couldn't be loaded without that post being here but over there I might be able to come back and work off of the new foundation or the new floor with my own lifting shores and make myself a little room if I have to and, and add a layer to something. Or maybe just that simple, just add a layer and then it passes inspection but otherwise is in space and and just fine to walk on safely. It just wouldn't pass inspection. So we're going to play a little jazz over there on that one. But this is just, well, it's just like paint. All kinds of setup, a couple days of setting up. And then under one minute and we're up this far and you know for that to be a success and go smoothly and you can rely on it it just takes all that prep and then what they're doing now is another case so take it slow and get everything just right and then burp, hit the button again so I'll come back and get, when he's ready to do that we'll look at that going up again I don't know what it is. I just love being able to nuke these problems that they've been having for so long. 
I love these folks like they're my grandparents, you know, and it's as well as being friends of mine. I'm just so sick and tired of watching this place give them headaches. See our gap growing there. This makes me want to pour a nine foot wall now. I know I shouldn't see it when it's way the hell up there. I'm just going to want it. Make me a cathedral basement. I don't give a fuck. First floor is concrete. Everything's concrete. <laughs> super cool. Super, super, super cool. This little hovel room was even shorter because of the floor in here. It was just rotting on the ground. Ed sometimes would come and visit and he was really busy and his long hair was stuck to the ceiling following him around like a bumper car. Getting its power from the roof from the overhead because his hair was all static. Never again, bud. That hot water tank in the middle of the room. This wall in here, this whole thing was just a black hole. You couldn't come over here, there's no light. You guys know, you've been watching. You've been watching. And these guys are gonna do their thing again. I haven't heard a creak or a groan or a tank or a pop. Nothing. Silent smoothness. Next thing I can't wait to see is to truck out all this garbage. All this trash materials that were incorrectly assembled and subjected to the elements for a century. The folks will be happy to have it where the, it's going, and I believe they're gonna pay for it even. Super affordable for them, but still helps us get it trucked out for a reasonable price since we can offset it with some income for the material itself. And we're gonna break this up too, because this is the one big piece here that when you tip them off into a truck, that truck box is really, you're asking a lot for it to hit the, I mean, it could rip a hole right through it, that steel. So that'll get broken into a bunch of chunks and stuff and load it out. Today's Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. No, today's Monday. Shit, working yesterday on Sunday got me screwed up. It's Monday, not even Taco Tuesday. Thursday, we're excavating this out. So I don't know what's going to happen between now and then. I'll have to ask the big man. Any idea what just that chimney that you picked up is way in it? For a total of roughly what? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Sixteen ounces to the pound and two thousand pounds to the ton. You threw a number out when we were looking at it last year, but I didn't know if you had any better. Now we didn't pick the bottom of it up. I was picturing you picking picking it up the hole from the bottom, but the bottom's How fucked. So the bottom? I'm stupid. To start with, I'm stupid, and I've never seen you do it before. So my buddy Steve tried to outthink me, and it never worked. I wasn't. I'm telling you straight up. I couldn't picture it, and it looks like it can't be done, or it wasn't worth it here because it was junk. So we didn't do that. We're going to put it on its own new basement wall, basically. So, And then we finish the inside with a block. So, Probably 50 out. I don't know if it's 55. Well, maybe it is. It's not warm. Well, going up again pretty soon here. Looks like we're at a total 30 inches or something. 28, 30. Maybe even more. There's got to be so much room to get up over and operate to set up the forms for the new foundation. Plus it's gonna be a fair amount taller. And so you gotta start with where you're thinking it's gonna to go to and then give yourself that much room above that for them to do their work. And then 
pack the jacks and the hose and all that stuff up and just leave things supported for a little while while we form pour that stuff get our inspections on it beforehand obviously and then wait for it to cure plus our new steel and getting it in place so walk through the possibly tall ceiling in the basement just makes me want to leave it this tall but actually what I'll do too is go out by the road or further away and look just imagine if we left it here where we would look you know compared to the neighbor houses and stuff but this is just this is cool this is real cool let me see what we got here <clears throat> <clears throat> had to rain on this kind of sloppy like I was saying but so hard to see everything here because the front yard's full but uh, obviously quite a lot higher than the neighbor way way like ridiculously high up here so and again we can picture it before god this is a mud pit out here this is all just slime topsoil this is why you don't this is why topsoil is not fill and you'll see i'll look at this more so when i said it's good digging here when i said it's good growing soil here i'm talking about the fact that it's gravel soil here um and that's down below all of this out front there was a lot more tree coverage and stuff here which we got rid of right off the start but he hardly could grow grass out here and they can grow it there because he didn't have enough sun see here he only had fucking moss growing on the front yard so now we got way more sunlight i'm gonna scrape this fucking slime topsoil off of here when it dries up we're gonna backfill with some probably number one or filtered bank run just like all around and then we'll put some topsoil on top for the lawn grass to grow on it. Otherwise, you just get slime that holds puddles and sinks, you know, the lawnmower. And if you drive on the lawn because you have guests, they sink. So it's just important to think about what you're putting back in here. He's got good gravel um, ground here. We'll just scrape this sludge. This is all organic leaves and thatch and lawn and detritus and all of that rotting down it's, it's lovely to provide nutrients to everything but if it's just a big bog of this you can't grow the types of things that we're talking about growing here in our climate zone and in, in around a, a home you'd want bog plants or something and even then they sit down deeper and where they are they're getting better drainage because of the gravel because it's not deep enough this boggy top so it's not it's nothing good there's nothing good about it it's just the the result of leaving a place unmanaged because it's been here for a hundred years and this is just what's built up over time and so we'll take the opportunity with this project because look at we're practically out to the road here with disturbing it and we'll get this whole area right and that'll be part of this too so keep an eye out for that and just give you guys a sense of what this looks like from the neighborhood's perspective <laughs> looking into the backyard underneath these folks are cranking their heads around. Holy shit. Didn't know you could do that. That's 50, 55 inches up. You know, that type of a thing. It's one of those scenarios where this is the freakiest part to me, is I have no problem loading those little stems of those jacks or the jacks themselves vertically, but the distance that he's happy to travel up before he gets under there and adds block is a lot more than I was anticipating. It's ballsy in my opinion, not completely necessary, but it does streamline how much in and out, in and out, back and forth, back and forth that you get to do, or have to do, so. And if the wind doesn't kick up, in the event that it does, you can just shoot and come right back down, but, you know, that whole thing.
neighbors are pumping the, must be opening the pool. They got the pool guys at the neighbor's house. That's what you're hearing anyway. <clears throat> must be fun to be those guys here just right now for an hour or two and this is twice as tall as it was when they walked into the job site. So they've been watching it go up while they're doing their thing. Get some stills from this, but here's our beam. Right on down. Three jacks under that. Three jacks under the other one. One to supplement the chimney. One in the area of the garage. For a total of eight jacks. I think they're $2,500 or so each. Power plant. Everything. I think he said a quarter of a million dollars for the power setup that he's got. So that's $250,000, obviously. So you've got, you know, whatever he figures into that. <clears throat> I don't know if it's all the machines and everything. I don't think it is. I think it's a lot more than that. After you add... The excavation equipment and stuff but these guys are just flooding the shit out of the road but there's a DI down that way so it's getting the water out there <clears throat> this didn't end up being in the way at all which I was pleased got my little it looks like a mess right now it'll get more organized once this whole wave this week to the point where the new foundations in and the house is on it and Georgie's out of here and the the big meat and potatoes stuff on this <clears throat> I want to get it all wrapped up and then get some dry weather, and then my operation is cleaner. This is just dirty work, and it isn't overly messy. This is actually quite clean for what it is that he's doing here. Even with the rain today, not that big of a deal. But So anyway, I'll get that organized out for my little job shop, and uh, didn't end up being in the way with the pod. He can drive right in with this, and we can stay out of the street with stuff. So it seems like a cream puff to me, as far as a project goes. Haven't heard any belly aching and stuff. I may pop a bunch. I'm going to see if how easily these tiles come off before we break this thing up. I think it might be nice to save these if people remember those. Because, again, Ned's wife grew up here, I think. Um, and so rather than just toss that out blindly, I'll see if I can get a bunch of those off of there. Maybe I'll give them to her to do some crafting with. Or I'll make something out of them. Or frame. Put a half dozen of them in a frame and give it to them. Hang it in the basement or something. Or in the entryway when we're all done. So, little touches. I think I said I cut the it's here somewhere I cut the top of the old pier off that her father and her brother signed so <clears throat> just do what we can to to ease the upset of having to have this done but that's a backer for the electrical panel Sean's running the power plant. Just keep going up. What I guess it's just the total stroke or most of the stroke for each of these units. Then block yourself up to there. Move up. Reset. Go up some more. So. Got wedges. Plywood layers. These are softwood. These are hemlock cribs. Um, he's got hardwood too for different applications for heavier stuff uh, my client is actually employed with a private contractor that works on the throughway overpasses and stuff a lot so he's lent me cribbing and that's all white oak smaller size I want to say it's like one half of these so it's four by six instead of eight by six because uh, they're as heavy or heavier than these are and they're a little longer too these are four and a half I think his are 60 inch so they're an unhandy length, they're relatively heavy, and so I'd much rather have these, but I don't know where the hell you get any. Sean's going to keep all of his, obviously, so. Just keep taking that chimney up and up and up. 16 ounces to the pound, he says. <laughs> and 
and essentially that jack is just sitting one half on one crib block, one half on the other, which is translating half of that load to either side to one crib block, which is translating half of that to either corner, which is translating it down. But you still, you start with, and you're only on one half of a crib block, or total one whole crib block by the time you're on half of one and half the other, if that makes any sense. It's just interesting to see, although he does, whoops, he does have a block underneath the pair. So yeah, so there's that too. Okay, so then rather than being on, where is it? One On both sides of the other two that it's hung between, he's just on one side of it, which is interesting. Just may not feel like hauling another block up there. And back there it's even lighter, so he isn't even under that much. And here he's got nothing. So it's these here. You added a block underneath the two that are, the jack is on, just in these two cribbing piles, just because of the weight of that chimney, probably, right? Yeah, and don't bother doing it in the other places because it's not worth it. That's the knowledge. All right, well, I ran out and got the guys a pizza. We got to talking about pizza, and I don't often get real pizza because Katie Merrill's gluten-free, and next thing you know, we're all craving pizza. So I walked in and said, what are you going to have a pizza out soon? And he said, yeah. I said, I'll buy the whole thing, and I turned around and came right back, and then, after we carb loaded, uh, we packed up the jacks. So that's all on board the trailer. And I don't know <clears throat> if I broke that down already, but the box, uh, the wooden box, I said, yeah, oh, you need something nice, but it's been, he parks it inside unless it's out on the job site. It's 30 years old, he said, but his jacks, the core of it is, uh, steel obviously excuse me and uh the surrounding thing that's on the that's a ledge and all of that it's aluminum so it's a bit lighter but the one part on one side the one part on the other this whole power plant and stuff the hose reel i guess has taken a shit on him a bunch so he wraps it up here for now it's coming down to rebuild time he was saying or he's not sure exactly whether he would just get a new one but here's your control module probably the same i think it is it's the same one that his dad used at our house, so they've been going the distance. He said one jack is $2,500, so however many we were saying and all of that, so <clears throat> that investment has been paying uh, for itself for many, many years. And they're getting ready to go and start removing some a little bit, I think. He said it's not raining and the sun's still out, so might as well keep moving. Now this is a case I don't know if I said this, I never know, but if these beams could have been this much longer, he would have still been underneath their ends with this I-beam, but he wouldn't have extended them this much, obviously wouldn't have needed to. But coming in here past the house, this is what you do if you can't actually install what you need. And I was wondering how you're gonna get up to the actual surface in here. Um, and so, it's just like I was saying when I first showed up here, blocking up to it here or there, wherever you gotta be. And he's, you know, <laughs> aware how many points he wants to be on so it's what three or four joists over in this corner over there yada yada main beam in the middle now getting the main beam out the original and putting the new one in the new one will be installed from beam pocket to beam pocket across the new foundation with posts underneath to support underneath the support and those will be dialed until it's nice and level but when we as we come down we got to get out from underneath and around that original beam so it can be cut and removed out of there so that area is clear when we finally land onto the new steel so we'll see that operation <clears throat> next week probably I was thinking I wouldn't get to posting any of these things till much later than this whole thing was finished but it's just unrealistic for me to think that I could backlog myself that much and then sit down and get through all that so I have been cutting these together and putting them on the tubes by the end of the same day this will be up tonight hopefully getting everything out of the way and uh, see if he makes any significant progress. And then I'll take a look at that. Well, this is how we get started. <clears throat> and we stay right the hell out of his way because he just gets going and tries to be quick about it. And you just wanna do what he's doing now and just zip around and be able to count on nothing in your way, not banging into anything, not wrecking anything. <clears throat> so you just stay right the hell out of his way or I'll quote unquote, I'll run you over.
This is why he's got a nice new machine. It's nice and tight. It's quiet. He's in the cab. If it's hot out, he's got air conditioning. If it's cold, he's got heat. Something's got a, a root in there a mile long. I don't know what that is. Meanwhile, Mikey, he's busting up our stairway in the front. That was just sitting here on the ground. Something else in here though. Some kind of concrete. It's all just settled down. Who knows how deep that goes, three-sided thing here. We'll find out. <clears throat> Yeah, that outside corner in just a crawl space is such a... Oh, you got a little piece off of there. <laughs> such a fucking waste of space. Over there when it's full basement now under the entire footprint of the house, it doesn't seem like a lot. That last little area there, but that's the better part of 100 square feet. It's probably... 75 square feet a couple sh sheets of plywood anyway on the floor there when it's full height all of a sudden I mean, it's a hole that could be where hot water tank water softener if you wanted it uh, or at least the radiant heat controls the furnace everything could be in that area of this basement <clears throat> and then you at least have the original footprint of the house with that much more ceiling that much nicer without any considerations for having to have a place for all the utilities and systems and stuff which may or may not be the case. In fact, I think at least the sink and the sump crock will be over there. There it is. Yeah, bud. Oh, yeah. Um, sump crock will be in that corner because I think <clears throat> if it runs and it pumps out, it can come out and go down into that low-lying area over there. It'll be the best place for it. You don't have anywhere else here. It's right on. It's the garage there. You got the front approach, driveway, and like appearance this here. On our side over here, <clears throat> they want a nice like finished garden area and grotto. And uh, so you don't want the sump pump puking out water over there into this area here. And so like I say, I think it makes the most sense over there. They were talking maybe like a hot tub patio and stuff. So that would be fine. It could go, I'm talking about it coming out in this area here, which is a bit of ground cover it's got plenty of it can accommodate that much water you know if it's flooding out here to the extent that that's running 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 in there which i don't think happens here that much it's already going to be a puddle here and it'll get kind of lost in the shuffle um but essentially in landing this thing higher they were already much higher up than this house i mean the difference in property value between the architectural style the elevation and the existence of this new basement versus this place on this other side that's got just as deep of a yard now there's a lot of scrub land or scrub trees and stuff in here, but I mean this big beauty, some widow makers and stuff that, you know, but you can clean this up here and have some big, nice old established trees, plenty of sunny yard out back uh, for a garden, all this infrastructure and stuff being new at this place. And I think, again, with the architectural style, yeah, they got an in-ground pool and, and stuff, but it's just like, this house is a looker. This one over here is a pile of dog shit as far as curb, curb appeal. It's in nice shape, it appears has some exposed foundation <clears throat> it's well taken care of maybe it's your cup of tea style wise but like 
<clears throat> and I'm not making a video to run the neighbor's house down. <clears throat> but I feel good about, you know, those two houses are quite a lot newer than this. And even that one, that one, that one, and that one. Visually, in terms of, in terms of curb appeal, when you got these types of houses here, there's another kind of a dud. I like that there. These mid-century houses as opposed to turn-of-the-century kind of houses. It's just a night and day difference, I think. That one's just never going to look as nice as this house does when we get this all done. Copper. I'll pull that out. All right, we gotta pick our fucking time here. Get this piece of shit. Get it out. Put it here. All in time for him to come on back trip over the fucking rest of it, cocksucker. Get out of there. <laughs> Just gotta work around all these cribs. This is the power of the skid loader. Wherever you are, you can make micro adjustments to it. You don't have to turn anything. You don't have to have room to maneuver. <clears throat> if it can exist in a space, you can get in and out of that space almost always. If you have the ability to do 360 degrees, you'll do it right now. There it is. Boom. Fold up the bucket. On your way to go get more. This is already caving off in here. So, do that a bunch more, all in the time that it takes to get this busted up. 
Now he's gotten to every location underneath these cribs before setting them up. So all you gotta do is get these big main avenues cleared out in terms of the floor and the block that's laying on top. <clears throat> and then, I'm not even sure what that is. It's got big stones and stuff in it too, looks like. They just take jostling around a little bit like this and all of a sudden it'll just go bang and turn into a bunch of pieces, potentially. He's thinking that now maybe and maybe one more time if it's not gonna if it's not gonna give it up, he'll leave it here for him to poke at it again with this and go back to what he was doing. Yeah. Time is money. Might have just crumbled to pieces, and if not, he can do another run, and Mikey can wail on it some more. Giving it up. She's coming apart. A couple more things I'll mention here. But you get all done measuring around, and he's got to be in the right location with these beams, given their spans and all of that. Everything I've discussed prior. But <clears throat> now, not only does he want to be able to come down this central lane between them with the skid steer that he owns and will be using for this. But I'm fairly certain that he can turn and go in between them in all three positions. So he can take out between the locations that he prepped for the cribbing itself and, uh, <clears throat> and the lanes in between it on the floor. All that's gonna remain is around the outside which he can probably, he will probably use the excavator and take that apart from outside. Either this one or the other one or what have you. And peck away at that. Because the other thing I'm going to mention is that you need to have <clears throat> a virgin site to create this foundation. We can't be digging deeper but then adding it back, like being additive and smoothing it and even tamping it or anything like that when you're pouring a footing or anything. Absolutely not. So he can't really be any lower than we're ever going to be here <laughs> while he's excavating. See this? That doesn't uh, affect this cribbing pile whatsoever. Just so packed tightly and vertically loaded that this thing here, you know, you couldn't throw it at that hard enough to do anything. Could he slam into these with a skid steer and, and have a problem? Absolutely. So he's going to be on top of that the whole way. <clears throat> when we get all done, he's doing the digging and making the hole for this new foundation as though you were going to build a new house on it. But he's doing it while removing our old one in and around all of the infrastructure for holding this residence overhead. So it's just several more layers here. So if asking him to dig a hole for your new foundation pour and footer is like child's play. And I, I gotta ask him, and I don't think he even does. He said he took a driveway replacement job this year, just for kicks, but uh, I don't think it'd be his first choice to prep, you know, and dig your new foundation hole just in the middle of your new property that you bought, just because it's not really his whole setup. Although money's money. So anyway, you can get into all these places and we'll see how he chooses to take the rest of this apart.
coming for you, bud. for you, bud. So he's right about where he wants to be <clears throat> in these areas. One singular rebar. Oh, hey, a couple rebar. Oh, you know what we did find out? There's a big crack here that I laughed at how they tried blending it to the old that was kind of pink. And I know by the pink that's original, but this here little section was new construction. They must have had to fix. I don't know what the hell this is, too. Maybe that's that divot out of the floor right there. We'll see. <clears throat> I don't want to be redundant. Some of you may be enthralled. I certainly am. And I feel self-conscious about running camera constantly on more of the same, but I don't want to miss anything here either, so feel free to fast forward now. Just checking everything out. This is his route here, obviously. We added this, if you remember when I started, this is real low, so he built himself this road. <clears throat> and he's been up and onto that pile over there for some reason too. Now that is just dirt, mostly from getting down into the back. He's not just mixing that in with a little bit of dirt that's coming with the block and the broken concrete. That's coming up front to get thrown away. Same as that stuff there. And I know I'm being a little redundant about that, but it all just seems like dirt or whatever stuff and whatever, but you find out when you try to get rid of it, it's heavy, it's expensive to move it. You gotta have a professional in a lot of cases. And the places where you take it, they'll take this, but they won't take that. Or they'll take both things that you've got, but they need to be separated. This goes in that stack and this goes in the other. Like I got stuck on those piers. When I took the piers from the porch, <clears throat> I had to go around the block and pitch them out of the dump trailer by hand to the concrete reclaimer, and then the rest of it could be dumped. And you'd say, you'd think, well, if I choose to throw it away outright, I don't have to recycle the concrete. Yes, but the dump doesn't want those pieces of concrete to slam down into their uh, trailer truck trailers that they're loading or they'll punch a hole in the bottom of it so they don't they don't accept it for that reason so there's always these little pitfalls and before you get all started doing what you're doing you have better have a plan for all of it or you could all of a sudden spend way more money than you thought sorting out an issue well that's the end of day two on site with Georgie um, <clears throat> I have got to Look at our egress window tomorrow. We are not gonna cast in, like I was saying, a nice, smooth, easy, economical uh, solution is to cast in the unit right into the wall. It just doesn't look right for a house this age. So I'm gonna go look at the units they've got tomorrow and make a selection. We'll just get a pressure treated rough opening through our wall on this in the back right there for it. Um, I've got to finalize whether or not we're going to pour a eight foot wall which is poured onto the footer and then the floor is poured on top of the footer and so however thick your floor is uh takes away from your interior wall height when you're all done and so you don't get a full eight foot wall necessarily with an eight foot wall pour a nine foot wall you get over an eight foot interior wall and so i think it's worth it now that we're so close and we actually went high enough you have to have the room to assemble the mold the forms 
for a taller wall and Sean was saying he thinks that there is so I asked for the same design with just one foot taller wall all the way around how much different of a price so we'll look at that uh, the steel beam Sean recommended a heavier beam but it doubles the weight and it doubles the cost and I don't know that we need to do that on this one um, so I don't think we're doing it that way there is the one place where there's a heavier post that was called out as a schedule 80 post and it would have to be fabricated to a certain length and not adjustable from my steel supplier I'd like to get all of our posts and steel beam all together in one thing and just have it show up and so he can build me an adjustable four inch diameter post which is a heavier post schedule 40 rather than the three and a half inch diameter schedule 40 posts which are the other posts but where that glue lamb um, end of the original house uh, beam I'm going to build meets up with the new main beam under where those come together we need that heavy post and so the steel supplier has to order a 20 something long stick 20 something feet long stick of schedule 80 just to make me an 8 foot piece or whatever and so that's too expensive and he's not trying to do that I have to ask the architect if we can use a 4 inch adjustable heavy duty post in that location now the architect is out of town till Thursday this week so <laughs> I don't know I gotta wait on that question this is the project management side of this I've got all these different timelines we've got the trucking happening but was I confirmed that today for Thursday however tomorrow's only Tuesday and this thing will be dug out and laying in a pile probably not even by midday tomorrow which means Wednesday I don't know if there'll be anything to do here uh, truck's broken so I can't tow I gotta borrow my buddy's truck to be able to get a dump trailer and tow the trash and stuff out of here I just like to tidy this side up and have more room to maneuver the stones coming after the footer is poured and the foundation drains are routed around the inside and the out side of it and there's weep holes between the two of them which equalizes the hydraulic pressure pressure all the way around in the location of the sump crock I believe there's some unique anatomy to the footer there to get into the sump crock and I have to spec that out and, uh, and point that out where I want it um, however before the wall is poured I want the stone slinger it's called to come and fire because he just shoots like a stream of stone on like a conveyor that's like screaming um, like a chainsaw conveyor that just like sprays the stone it's generally easier to spray it all out into the center with just the footer here and then pitch it over the footer out onto the outer tile all the way around and just sweep the top of the footer off before you form up and pour the footer walls because if you pour them first you can stone slinger through a window hole or two to get stone to the inside but then you may be able to stone slinger a little bit at the front corner or something but then you got to cart it all around and pour it in on top of the tile all around all the time the rain if we get any in traffic and just time uh, the side wall of the of the hole could be caving down and the the dirt could be falling straight onto the drainage tile instead of having the stone on top of it like it should have and it's just a race against time to get that all correct and a lot of this is just me running around doing this by hand because I needed something to do on this one and you can't hire everything out it just gets too expensive they're already hiring out my project management and I'm perfectly capable of these tasks so those are the things that I'll be doing <clears throat> and so uh, I thought there was some other small consideration that I want to get started and stay ahead of but it's escaping me now which is what's keeping me up nights is the feeling that I'm forgetting something and I'm you know still battling my <clears throat> allergies but what I'm saying is I'm not it's not that I'm not writing stuff down it's just having an opportunity when this is your day to sit down and look at paperwork and make calls see now it's after five so there's daylight but uh, there's nothing for me to do on the site and I can't make any calls get anything done in the world so we're off the hook until tomorrow i'm gonna go home and get this started cutting together and put it on the internet so you guys can watch thanks for watching we'll see ya <laughs>